Arm and Hammer hosted a heifer workshop and farm tour this week in Utah. Uh, we spent about three and a half to four hours in a classroom setting where Dr. Bob Corbett went over his heifer development program and I shared some of the key bottlenecks that I've observed around the country with heifer development programs. And then today we've been visiting Bound Dairy who have been doing a full heifer development program for at least 10 years. And we've had the pleasure of Bob uh, sharing their experiences, how the program developed on their farm and what they see as the benefits. And I'll have to say of all the farm tours I've been on, I've never seen a group of 20 veterinarians and nutritionists stay as close to the host and ask as many questions as we've had here this morning. So I think there's been a lot of information exchange and people have really learned a lot from this experience. But as I tour farms, I see a lot of people doing really good things with their heifers in one segment or another, but it seems like we run into problem areas and they're kind of common among herds. The first one is colostrum management, how we get it delivered, how quickly, the volume, the cleanliness of harvest, but all around the colostrum program is very, very important on the future performance of those calves. And then secondly is the ramp, what I call the ramp up of milk, whole milk or milk replacer. A calf needs more energy than just what two quarts of milk replacer twice a day will provide. And so we're trying to, from day two to seven, ramp these up to three quarts twice a day or two and a half quarts three times a day. And then the next area that we see as a problem area is the transition phase. When we bring them off of milk and onto the starter grain mix, a lot of people's calves will go through the lag phase then or immediately after they leave the hutches and go into small group pens. And we discussed several uh, ideas about how people have implemented slight changes and then reduced the amount of lag that these animals go through. One being just leaving them in the hutches on milk a week longer and not weaning them till eight or nine weeks and then le leaving them in the hutch till they're consuming at least eight pounds of starter grain mix before we move them into the group pens. If we do those two things, it seems like we have a lot less uh, what we call lag when they move into the group pens or where they don't continue the average daily gain that they had been while they were on milk. The next area that is a problem area in the industry today is because of ration costs, we're trying to introduce forage to calves at 250, 300 pounds before they're really two, uh, true ruminants. It's okay to introduce 10, 20, even 30% good quality alfalfa hay along with your starter or grower grain mix. But to start feeding wet feeds at these real young age and 50% of the dry matter coming from these silages, these calves just aren't ready to digest them. They'll eat them, but they won't perform and will have a lot more respiratory conditions and much less average daily gain. The next area that we spoke briefly about was the importance of moving these animals to the breeding pen. And that hip height for Holsteins is roughly 51 to 52 inches. And we have a minimum breeding age of 10 months, but hip height is our main criteria. For the Jersey growers, we'll be about eight inches less than that, 42, 43 inches on hip height on the jerseys and probably won't breed any of those animals before nine months of age. And then the last area that we spoke about as a bottleneck is the length of time that these animals are in the close-up pen. Many heifers don't get moved because of lack of facilities soon enough so that they're on the close-up diet 21 to 28 days. They'll only be on 10 days. And I think we've got big herds that have monitored this NEF that we know there's a couple thousand pounds of milk the next lactation if we have these real short close-up periods. So 
If you're not already tracking days in close up on your herd, I'd highly suggest that you put that in the computer and start monitoring that. And I guess the total summation of this is that the chain is only as strong as your weakest link. And these six or seven points I've shared with you, uh, they're not all the weak links on every farm, but it's a good review and what I kind of use when I tour a heifer growing operation to see where they might improve. And it definitely is proven that these more intense management systems are certainly worth the effort and the input in both labor and cost. And the way they pay for themselves is first, in two to three months, is a reduction in drug bills and death loss on these milk-fed calves. And then you can feed more calves through the same amount of hutches if they're growing at a faster rate. And then we all know the health benefits later in gestation and, and into their first lactation, the extra milk and performance. These animals aren't still growing the first hundred days in milk.